Hello and welcome in our section sec, second lecture of sharing shear force and bending moment diagram. In our previous class, we have seen that what is a shear force, what is a bending moment, and how we make the shear force and bending moment diagram. In this session, we are going to cover quickly that what are the different types of beam and what are the different types of loading we are going to in we are going to consider when while we are making the shear force and bending moment diagram. So we are going to basically consider three types of beam. The first beam is a cantilever beam and a cantilever beam is look like a fixed end and a free end. So we also call it a fixed free beam where this is a fixed end and this is a free end. So in the case of a cantilever beam what happens you have already studied this in your uh, uh, previous uh, classes maybe in the mechanics or if you are taking this course in this topic in mechanics that you have already seen that loading in different beams even though if you are not uh, aware about this you can see my lecture of loading or reaction of different beams so in case of a fixed beam what happens actually if you are interested to find reaction at this point your reaction will be combination of two types of force one force will be a force and another force will be a moment so we are going to if this is my force f suppose we ignore this force f this is my force f so we are going to have a force f here and a moment f l if the length is l on the other end the second type of beam is a simply supported beam which is having two support supported at two end one end normally is a pin joint another end is a roller joint and sometime we also have a pin pin type of beam otherwise it's a pin and roller type of beam the third type of beam is a, a overhanged beam an overhanged beam overhang beam basically combination of simply supported and cantilevered beam if you will see here that this portion is a overhanged portion in this case where we are having one support here and another support here so, so we can say that this portion is basically represent a cant simply supported type of section then the remaining parts represent a cantilever type of section and normally in civil engineering we find this uh, structure very frequently suppose we are having a balcony uh, protruded uh, outside to the building so in that case we the balcony will be considered as a overhanged part this is a single overhanged kind of beam here i am showing a double overhang so you are having overhang in this side as well as on the other side and these are also two pin joint Sometimes you may have a pin joint and a roller joint, doesn't matter. So the third type of beam is overhanged beam. So now we have seen three types of beam, cantilevered, simply supported and overhanged. In case of simply supported, if you are interested to find reaction, reaction will be combination of a force and a moment. But in case of a pin joint, the reaction will be only forces because we know that at the pin joint, moment will always be zero. There will be only reaction. Here I am showing two reaction otherwise generally we have to consider one horizontal reaction one vertical reaction but we know in this case if the force is acting in the downward direction only my <coughs> reaction force will also be in the vertically upward direction in case of simply supported beam before starting the shear force bending moment diagram we have to first find the reaction similarly in case of overhanged beam first we have to calculate the reaction and then we we'll start making the shear force and bending moment diagram now let's talk about different types of loading so in this course we are going to talk about three types of loading mainly one is a point load so this type of load which is at, at a single point concentrated load are known as the point load second is the uniformly distributed load uniformly distributed and third one is the variable loading so here i am showing that what are the different loads uh, all the loads i am showing here on a cantilever beam so you first you should understand that what are the loadings one is a point load another one representation this is the representation of a uniformly distributed load we assume that for this length which is 4 meter here the load is uniformly distributed and if we will see the nomenclature of loading we will find that this is 2 newton per meter this is the intensity of this uniformly distributed load that means if i want a single force the total force will be 2 into 4 and that is acting at the center of this length so if i am going to replace this uniformly distributed load what i will do i will make a equivalent figure where this will be a 10 newton force and this load will be at here and the magnitude of this load will be 4 meter into 2 so now my loading will be 8 newton instead of newton meter because my 4 into 
टू वेयर यूनिट इज न्यूटन पर मीटर एंड दिस इज मीटर सो मीटर मीटर विल कैंसिल आउट एंड आई विल हैव अ लोड ऑफ एट न्यूटन दिस इज अनादर रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड लोड बिकॉज इन सम ऑफ द बुक यू विल फाइंड दिस टाइप ऑफ कोरोगेटिव टाइप ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशन अदरवाइज यू मे ऑल्सो फाइंड दिस टाइप ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशन विच इज ऑल्सो सेम इट इज ऑल्सो यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड लोड थर्ड टाइप ऑफ लोडिंग इज ए वेरिएबल लोडिंग इन केस ऑफ वेरिएबल लोडिंग योर लोड वेरी वेरी मे बी लीनियरली और मे बी विथ सम कर बट पर्टिक्युलरली इन स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मटीरियल अंडर ग्रेजुएट कोर्स वी कंसिडर द लीनियरली वेरिंग लोड सो योर लोड इज बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ए ट्राइंगल सो हियर द लोडिंग विल बी मैक्सिम एज यू आर मूविंग टूवर्ड द फिक्स जो एंड योर लोडिंग इज रिड्यूसिंग एंड द रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ लोडिंग इज द हाइट ऑफ द लोड इज डिफाइंड एज द डब्ल्यू न्यूटन पर मीटर सो यू शुड नॉट कन्फ्यूज दिस न्यूटन पर मीटर विथ योर यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड लोडिंग बिकॉज इन केस ऑफ वेरिएबल लोडिंग ऑल्सो वी हैव दिस टाइप ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशन एंड इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड टू फाइंड अ सिंगल load what would be the load value the load will be value will be the area of this triangle please remember the load total load will be what area of this triangle that would be 1 by 2 into l into w so my loading will be w l by 2 now at which point this load will act so as we have seen here that the loading we considered at the centroid of this length so centroid of this length will be the 2 meter from this end here so in in case of a triangle we know that for a triangle the centroid is here if the this is the l length this will be l by 3 and this will be 2 l by 3 so in particularly for this kind of loading if i am interested to make an equivalent beam my loading will be somewhere here if this is l so this load will be w l by 2 which will act at l by 3 distance why i am saying that this l by 3 because sometime you may find a loading which is in this way where this is the fixed side so in this case your equivalent beam will have a load here and if the total length is suppose 6 meter and this height is defined as the 3 so my total loading will be 1 by 2 into 6 into 3 so the total loading will be what 9 and the position of this loading will be centroid of this triangle basically i am interested in the centroid in the this direction not in the vertical direction so as this is 6 i know that the centroid will be l by 3 from this side the uh, maximum loading side so 6 by 3 means 2 meter so my load will be the equivalent beam will like look like that there is a loading of 9 newton and the load is acting at a distance 2 meter from the fixed side one more type of loading normally uh, we see is this type of loading where this line is just uh, a connection and we assume that this is a rigid connection and we are applying a force f here which is at a distance l l so now if you want to find what is the exact loading on your beam you have to make a force couple diagram of this loading this force couple diagram we study in our mechanics course so what we do actually we will consider that instead of that we will apply two force here at this point where the this connection is connected at the beam so we are going to consider one f force in the upward direction one downward force at the same point f force now we will make and again one other diagram so we will assume that now we are having one force f here another force f here this is a connection and one force is acting in this direction so this f and this f which are going to make a couple and this f will remain as it is so if i am going to make an equivalent beam of this kind of uh, loading my at this point i am having a couple which is having a direction of clockwise or sense of clockwise so the couple will have value fx and another force f here so this type of loading force has to convert in this way and then we in we are going to solve for making the shear force and bending moment diagram so in this session we have covered different types of loading and different types of uh, beams now in next lecture we will start shear force and bending moment diagram of a cantilever beam for different types of loading thank you